Hello, my friends. My name is Pedro Candayas, and I'm the founder of Karate Science Academy and responsible for all the content and knowledge uh, shared on um, Karate Science Academy platforms. Uh, I'm from Portugal, so first of all, I'm sorry for any mistake in my spoken English, okay, because um, writing, I'm very comfortable reading also, but my spoken English, it's not exactly this, the thing I make every day, so I will use these online classes weekly to also perfection my my English, okay, my pronounce and all of that. So, but I'm here with all my heart, with any um, formalisms, okay, just me, my microphone, my computer, some notes and a quick PowerPoint to teach you everything evidence knows about the teams I will bring every week in this channel, okay, of Karate Science Academy. So, first of all, let me say you that um, these classes are very deep classes. They can um, be 50 minutes, 50 minutes long, one hour long. I don't care. I'm not preparing that. I'm not planning that. I don't have a script to follow, okay? So, I'm just going to talk about the theme I bring every week and let's roll it. And I hope you're not one of those um, karate coaches or athletes that comes uh, that come here to, um, to get the ultimate secret to become Sandra Sanchez or Rafael Agaev in six months. That doesn't exist. All the champions, all the elite coaches and athletes in karate or non-athletes, uh, those who train for 30, 40 years and are um, top level traditional karatekas also, um, ask them if they know the secret to get there and they will just laugh on your face. So let's be serious. These classes are just for those who really want to go deep on evidence-based training methodology specific for karate, okay? So if you are here, just waiting for a five minute long video because that's what digital marketing uh, tell us to do. I don't care about it. I just want to share knowledge and the rest is bullshit, okay? So let's direct to the point and let's see the four training zones for muscle power. So. Let me introduce this. Muscle power is the basic, the basics, the foundation of, um, is the result, the ultimate, the ultimate result that we want to achieve with strength training, with speed training, um, is the relationship between both of these, um, these qualities, okay? These variables, so, but we, in order to develop um, a really strong, a really fast karate, both in Kumite or Kata, we must have a training program that includes all the four zones, okay? Of course, the percentage of each one of it, uh, which one of them, um, it's different um, according to the, the athlete we are talking about if it's more advanced uh, on his physical qualities, it's if uh, an athlete, uh, a, a he or a she, uh, has more experience in external loads, strength training um, or not, uh, we don't have the same training program for that athlete that uh, goes to the gym the first time tomorrow, okay, or um, an athlete that already has a two-year two or three-year experience in the gym, for example, okay? So let's talk about the, the zones of training power. This is just um, a way of uh, schema, schema, uh, the structuring, okay, things, so it can be, um, it can be easier to the coaches to um, manage all the, 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 the training methods that we have available for strength, power, and speed, okay? So we have, we have the zone one, 
the zone of strength, the zone two, strength, speed, the zone three, speed, strength, and the zone four, speed. This fourth zone is the, this fourth zone, okay, zone four is the, the most specific for karate because it's the, the one that includes training methods with um, lighter loads, okay, um, even with just the, the body weight of the athlete, but that doesn't matter that we, we must only train in that zone because zone one, two, three will bring always something relevant for your neuromuscular system because your neuromuscular system, attention to this, um, it doesn't know the difference be between maximal strength, explosive strength, um, reactive strength, uh, endurance strength. It, it doesn't know, okay? It just has a goal, okay? You give a goal to your neuromuscular system. You just want to displace faster. You just want to punch harder. You just want to jump higher, okay? And the neuromuscular system will get um, all the resources, okay? He has um, in, the, in his hands and just will find a way of achieving that goal, okay? So if we have more resources, Okay, if we give more resources to our neuromuscular system, you will have more tools to solve the problem we um, put in front of it or him. Okay, the neuromuscular system is just like a person, okay, that has his, his own personality. So let's go here for um, a blank sheet, okay, and let's talk about the zone one. Okay, strength. Here we are talking about um, training with external loads uh, superior to 70% uh, of one um, RM or rep um, maximal repetition. Okay, this is the same thing as saying the um, more than 70% of your maximal strength. Let's imagine that you have an athlete that can lift, can move uh, in just one time, uh, 100 kilograms, okay? That uh, is maximal strength. The maximal load, he can move just once. So 70% will be 70 kilograms, okay? 80% will be 80 kilograms. Of course, we need to know um, the maximal strength for each exercise, okay? To, to define this, but not always. Depends on the, the training method uh, that the, we have um, very um, easy ways, okay? Practical, practical, practical ways of, of um, determining uh, the, the, the percentage of the, the training load for each method, but there are some methods that we really need to determine the, the maximal strength of the athlete. There are other methods that, that we have just um, simple, uh, simpler, okay, easier methods to, um, to do that, okay? So here we are talking about the the following training methods maximal strength okay traditionally maximal strength is uh, seen as um, a way of traditionally people train maximal strength with very very heavy loads that achieve the athlete to move the the bar the weight just uh, one, two, three, four, five maximal repetitions. Okay, they will, they will definitely increase their maximal strength. That's no, there, there are no doubts about, uh, there is no doubts uh, about that. But the truth is that if we really want to optimize 
the maximal strength training we must do one thing to increase muscle mass okay because the muscle mass is the um, the greatest influencer okay of our strength of our maximal strength okay if we have bigger muscles okay if we have uh, more contractile material okay more um, um bigger muscle fibers okay that know how to work together of course we can produce more strength i don't know any strongman athlete okay from the strongman championship okay that is um a thin guy okay uh, they all are very very big they all have huge amounts of muscle mass because more muscle mass allow us to produce more strength there is no doubt about that now if you have an athlete especially an a committee athlete that you don't want him to go to the next weight category in the committee so we can't um you can't make um make him much uh, um, too big okay in terms of muscle mass because that you take the risk um you uh, of, of getting him to the next weight category so there training with very heavy loads with uh, um one to five okay maximum repetitions won't have a significant result in terms of muscle gains but definitely will increase his mus uh, his, uh, his uh, maximal strength okay there is no doubt about that but if we really want to maximize the maximal strength gains we must train with a protocol for hypertrophy okay and there we are talking about submaximal methods where we train with loads between 65 more or less and 85 percent of um yeah their, their maximal strength in this um this uh, is the equivalent of making approximately between 60 to 5 maximal repetitions. Okay. Got it? Yes. And so this is one of the greatest uh, mistakes that we see in um, sports training, in hypertrophy, in the gym. Uh, when we hear those guys that say, no, today I'm going, I'm just going to develop my maximal strength and they put heavier loads and they just um, make one, two, four, five maximal repetitions, but they miss the main point of maximal strength that is muscle mass. So when they are training for hypertrophy, that's where they are having the highest gains of maximal strength because the muscles will grow and will they will have more more um contractile okay material to produce strength okay so then we uh, we have um explosive strength academically this uh, the name of this is rate of uh, force development okay but i'm going to always use the term uh, explosive strength because i think it's more intuitive for all of you and it's more um, easy to to memorize so explosive strength i'm talking about with heavy loads okay I'm talking about more than one, uh, more than ninety percent of the of maximal of the athlete's maximal strength. Uh, that is um, more or less one to three maximal repetitions per set. Okay, here we have a big difference um, compared to maximal strength. In maximal strength, I just uh, I, I'm just concerned to. Um, 
I'm just concerned of moving the load without um, concerning about the speed of contraction or the, the, the movement speed, okay? But in explosive strength, I will try to move a very heavy load, okay? But the fastest, the faster I can, okay? The fastest I can, okay? So I'm just going to ask my athlete to move, try to move a very heavy load the fastest he can, okay? As fast as he can. Um, when you observe the bar, the weight, if it's a very, very heavy weight, the weight will always move slowly, okay? It will always move slow. But um, the athlete must have the intention to move it as fast as he can. That's very important. So the, the his neuromuscular system gets the, um, the right stimulus, okay? And what's the importance of explosive strength? This type of method with, with very heavy loads with the fastest um, contraction possible. It will um, improve the initial phase of the acceleration of the movement. Let's imagine a kata athlete that must um, move from a static position, okay, the, um, as fast as he can. Okay, the transition between positions must be fast from the, the, the very start. Okay, so if we identify um, is slow getting out of, out of the position, this is a fundamental training method so we can accelerate very fast from the very first um, moment from especially from a static position. This is valid for that is valid for kata or also for kumite, of course. Um, this is just an example. Okay. Then we have the Olympic weight weightlifting. I'm just um, putting this here. Um, I will dedicate um, an online class here on YouTube just to this method because uh, people right now look to this method in a, a, a very extreme, in two very extreme, extreme ways. Some think this is very dangerous will harm your spine and blah, 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 blah. And, the, and the, we can do it because it's uh, just an uh, antiquate method that will uh, get you all the problems in the world. That's not true. That's not true. But we also have the other extreme um, where right now it's um, a fashion method in some uh, sports um, circles as the um, ultimate secret, the ultimate uh, method to get you as uh, the most powerful you can. That's not, that's also not true. It's a good method. It's effective. It's safe if it's uh, well done with proper technique, proper progression, proper loads, of course, but it's not better than other training methods uh, we have available for our rapid strength, okay? Power, explosive strength, speed, all of that, okay? But that's, it's a valid method for the zone one strength, okay? Let me show you right now um, two things. Let's go here first. The importance to, uh, to get one more um, argument in favor of training with heavy loads. In karate, in the physical training of karate, we have um, athletes that uh, do a great job at the gym, okay? But they focus only um, or mainly in the zone four speed with light loads because it's more specific for karate. For karate. It's true, but uh, even, the, even though the percentage of those methods must be higher for experienced athletes, okay? I'm just going to talk about uh, that in a while. 
um, it's very important that they include also the zone one of the um, muscle power training zones. Okay, let's see these numbers. Um, a person, a regular person that make a max, uh, uh, um, that try to move the maximal load he can just once, but without having the um, the the concern of moving it uh, very fast, will produce something like thirty to uh, to sixty um, electric impulses per second to the muscle. Okay, um, but if we get an untrained person, an untrained in explosive strength, they will be able to achieve 80 to 100, 120 impulses per second, okay, um, in the activation of the muscle, okay? It's very different from just moving the load without um, worrying about the speed of contraction. When we try to make an instantaneous contraction, the um, uh, discharge or activation freq frequency of the muscles will increase um, very, 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 um, very, uh, a lot more, okay? But if we compare this individual with that athlete that has some weeks or months of experience in explosive strength, it may achieve 200 hertz per sec, um, impulses per second, okay, um, in the muscle contraction. Okay, so as you imagine, the movement will be much powerful, much faster, okay? So this is the importance of explosive strength. I um, I just want to um, remember you that this is very important for the initial phases of the acceleration of a movement, especially from static positions. Okay. Um, let's see now another thing. It's I'm going to let this for the for the end. Okay. Let's talk now about zone two and zone three, okay? Here we have zone two and three. We are talking about strength, speed, and speed, strength, okay? What's the difference? Here, I will train with approximately 50 to 70 percent of the athlete's maximal strength okay here i'm going to put the athlete working with external loads of 30 to 50 percent more or less um, of his maximal strength okay here i can include Olympic weightlifting also without any problem with lighter loads. Um, I can include the traditional method of um, of power training. Okay, and what exactly is this method? Imagine um, a regular exercise that you make to gain muscle mass, for example. I mean, I'm doing a squat and when I'm trying to train endurance strength or maximal strength, I'm not concerned about um, the, the speed movement, the movement speed, okay? But if I try to make that same squat as fast as I can, okay, I'm working the traditional methods for power training, okay? That's what we can call the traditional method for power training. We just uh, get any strength exercise at the gym and try to make it as fast as you can, as we can, okay? Just that. If I want to stimulate the more the strength dimension of power, I will get the um, um, from 50 to 70 
um, percent of my uh, maximal strength if I want to make it um, more and more um, near of um, what karate needs, that is to move our own body weight, our own arms, legs, kicking, okay? I'm going to work with lighter loads, okay? This has an advantage and some disadvantages, okay? The advantage, well, let's talk about the disadvantage first. The problem with this method um, is that for pushing movements, or in other words, um, punches, kicks, uh, movements that go outside the body, okay? Outside, outside, uh, outside, a kick, a displacement, everything you can imagine, a jump, okay? This is not exactly the greatest method. Why? Because as the um, our brain knows that he has to stop the movement, okay? If I don't want to release the bar or to jump after a squat, I just have to break the movement, okay? Um, to avoid that, okay? So what our neuromuscular system is going to do is to, strike, to, to start breaking the movement way before it, it ends, it ends, okay? I won't be able to produce my maximal power all over the movement, along all the movement. I will make um, a significant percentage of the, um, of the movement breaking so the bar doesn't get out of my hands or I just don't uh, jump from the squat, for example, okay? That's um, a problem to optimize my power training, my power development, development, okay? But in pulling movements like a Nikite, um, when I recover uh, the leg from a, a kick, for example, everything that is related to pulling movements I don't, um, I can't use a ballistic method, for example, okay? That's the method that allows me to produce the maximal po power all along the movement. This method, the traditional method for, 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 of power training doesn't allow me to do that. But in pulling movements, this is the best we have to develop that kind of speed and power. Okay, so it's valid and must be considered in a um, well-designed training program for an athlete, kumite or a kata, okay? Um, I'm going now to talk about um, the zone four. That is the zone of speed. Here, we are talking about working with, external, with loads of zero to 30% of the max of the athlete's maximal strength. What is zero? Okay. Um, generally, zero percent of uh, is 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 related to the just moving our body weight, our own body weight. Okay, or just moving our arms without any external load, as a, a medicine ball or a bar or a, a, a band, an elastic band. Okay. So generally, zero percent is when we just move our own weight arms legs um okay all of that here we have a, a training method called ballistic method okay um i'm going to show you what ballistic method is let's see two videos okay this is a vertical jump using the ballistic method as you see i'm a uh, at a, in a static position, okay? And I just jump from that position. This is a, the ballistic method, okay? I can apply this principle to all kinds of exercises I can imagine, okay? I could make a, a bench press, okay? With the release of the bar, launching it 
through the air and get it again, getting it again. Okay, this is ballistic method that allows me to produce the maximal power all over the movement without any breaking. Okay, um, and this is generally the the best law to do this is generally i'm going to give you some more information to uh, until 30 percent of your maximal strength but there is an exception for example here we have another example of a ballistic exercise flying push-ups from a static position at the floor okay where i push my body from a static position and don't break the movement just release the hands off the ground to produce the maximal power I can. Okay. Now let's return to our shit here. Okay. Um, this is truth. For example, um, for uh, the jump, for um, generally ten percent. Okay, above um, one RM. It's generally the load that will bring you more results okay that's what uh, studies say but curiously ballistic training can also be present in the zone three because for the um, the the upper limbs the best loads for example for um, a bench throw um uh, a bar throw like a, a bench press but releasing the bar okay it's um in the middle of it's between 20 to 50 percent of one maximal repetition one, the, the maximal strength of your athlete so ballistic training can also be included in the upper limbs in uh, zone three for example okay now let's see another thing plyometric training plyometrics it's easier so plyometrics it's in my opinion and here is just my opinion one of the best best methods for karate karate athletes okay it's a method that is um, very unknown for the most uh, for most of the karate coaches and athletes some know more or less what it is and some think they are using it well but un unfortunately they are don't they are not taking the most out of the method because they are using it in the wrong way okay so let's talk a little bit more about um plyometrics to know what plyometric training is, we first need to know what isn't. Okay. We, when we make, um, okay, let's see the video. Look at this athlete, a very high level athlete that is making a, 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 whole, a, whole, a whole circuit, circuit with um, very, uh, with a lot of, um, exercises that can be used in plyometric training but what is doing it's not plyometrics okay this is just endurance strength with jumps it's valid as its place in a well-designed conditioning program for a, a kumite athlete or kata athlete but this is this can't be called plyometrics and this don't doesn't have doesn't uh, take plyometrics to um, an optimal training stimulus for your athlete's power and speed. Okay, why? Because plyometrics must be a, a, a method that we use um, low repetitions per set generally eight to ten repetitions a repetition in plyometrics is counted as um, a contact on the ground 
of the feet, uh, of the, the arm, if we are talking about, for example, a plyometric push-ups or uh, plyometric uh, um, throws of medicine balls, for example, it demands um, moderate, okay, okay, long rest pauses between sets, okay, I'm talking about two to three minutes each 10 repetitions, okay? That's not, that is, that's not um, happens in the video we saw because the athlete makes a circuit, um, a circuit with um, maybe 100 ground contacts with uh, his feet, okay? For example, okay? But for taking the most out, out of plyometrics, the neuromuscular system of the athlete must be as fresh as possible um, on each set, okay? That's fundamental to develop speed, okay? That's one of the biggest mistakes we see in karate training is that uh, coaches don't let the athletes rest um, enough between sets, between exercise, even between repetitions, depending on the method they use, uh, between training sessions, and that leads to uh, an accumulated fatigue that will be negative for the development of maximal speed. Okay. Of course, we must uh, develop the, 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 um, the capacity of the athlete to keep, to maintain uh, a good level of power, even when he's fatigued uh, in a kumite bout or a kata round, okay? But that's another goal. Important, but not the same as when I identify that my athlete... Um, is not fast enough in a single movement. He really must to develop his maximal speed, his maximal power. And that's where I will use the methods of rapid strength, explosive strength, reactive strength with plyometrics, okay? Power with ballistic training or the traditional method. All of, the, of these methods demand um, long rest pauses. Okay, rest intervals, that's fundamental. And I'm going to talk more about that in a specific class. But um, right now I, um, I, I will, um, um, I will, uh, I will what? It, it miss the, the term. That's the problem with my spoken English. It's not well oiled by now, but in a few weeks, this will be. Perfect. Okay. In our Telegram group, we, we have a Telegram group. It's an app, kind of a, a, of a WhatsApp, a WhatsApp um, but um, for me, better to organize the content I communicate with Karate Science Academy's um, uh, community. And there I have already in English um, PDFs about the, the types of strength where I explain um, very detailed, in a very detailed way, uh, the, 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 the several types of strength, it's important to you to, uh, if you want to, to, to get to a top level um, as a coach, you really need to understand this. Um, I have a strength training checklist, an infographic with the, 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 the information very well um, connected, okay? Um, I have a PDF where, will you, where you will know everything, literally everything about plyometrics, you can get that PDF that is free in Telegram group and you are, you are able to, uh, to start uh, using a proper designed plyometric training next week with your athletes, okay? Of every levels, initiate, advanced, okay? With all of them, okay? Just go there and read it. Just make a scroll and it's all there, okay? I also have a, a PDF about the importance of the rest intervals and why uh, they are so important, okay? 
uh, this is all for those who, who, who like to, to, to read. And then we, I have audios about the influence of every, every type of strength in Kumite and Kata. I have an audio um, speaking about the muscle mass. That's another class I'm going to, to get in the next weeks here in, on YouTube. How muscle mass can be um, useful or uh, harmful for your karate. It has advantages and it has disadvantages depending on how you see it and use it, okay? Um, an audio about ballistic training also with more information than that uh, than what I'm giving you here because this is a class, a generic class about the four training uh, zones for muscle power. It's not a class where I'm going to teach you each method because we don't have the time, okay? Um, Telegram, in the description below, you can... Um, go directly to our group just join the, the channel you can also subscribe our YouTube channel to um, get warned about the next class on YouTube because uh, be aware of this this class for example will be indefinitely on our YouTube channel but many of the classes I'm going to teach here will um, get offline when I publish the new class okay um, I'm just I'm going to to let um, half a dozen classes always available in the channel, okay? But most of the classes will be available just one week uh, before I publish another class. This is just because um, I just want to reach those who really want to commit to take their knowledge about training methodology, evidence-based training methodology to the highest level possible, okay? And that demands a great commitment, that demands dedication, that demands time, that demands motivation for following the content. So you know that the 90% of the class I'm going to teach here will be available just for one week. So you really must take this serious, you can, we, I will warn you about the, the, the new release uh, on Instagram, um, email, uh, um, YouTube will notify you if you subscribe to the, the channel and uh, activate the notif notification in the Telegram. So there isn't no excuses, okay, um, for not knowing when the new class is published. It will be every Wednesday. I can't ensure you assure you the, the 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 right time because I have a, a a life offline, a professional life offline with my gym, my karate classes, and all of that. So I may have some issue that doesn't allow me to publish always at the same hour, at the same time. But the day will be always on Wednesday. Okay, when I publish, I send a communication to all the channels so you can go there and assist the class, okay? Let's continue. Here you have also um, a method, karate-specific displacements. This is a very simple um, method, very effective, where you just use something uh, like... Um, uh, how can I say? Ah, a weighted vest, for example, okay? A weighted vest or a sled, those sleds used by um, the athlete of 100 meters running, okay, for example, or just a, a, an elastic band on your waist where you displace against that resi resistance. You just take specific displacements for kumite and kata, of kumite and kata, and add um, an extra load to uh, stimulate your uh, neuromuscular system, okay? But attention, one thing. Studies show clearly that if the goal you have, the main goal is to develop speed in the displacements, you should use uh, not more than 10% of your body weight in the weight vest, weighted vest, for example, okay? For example, if I weight um 90 kilograms i will put a maximum of, maximum of nine kilograms on the weighted vest inside the weighted vest okay so many times i see athletes 
putting as much as they can okay it's valid if they want to develop other types of strength maximal strength um explosive strength okay uh power with the traditional method in zone two or three it's valid but to work in the zone four for speed don't put more than 10 percent of your body weight inside the weighted vest okay that's what evidence says it's very clear uh so i leave you here this um this tip okay so it just you just grab a weighted vest something like that uh a pack okay <laughs> and you make the specific displacements for kata or kumite it's a simple method very effective and you can use it with a lot of, 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 of success okay let's talk about here right now a little bit more about uh, the stretch shortening cycle this is important to know i'm going to dedicate also uh more than one class to plyometrics but you also have the access to this in the, that pdf on telegram group uh telegram channel you where you have everything what evidence knows about plyometrics everything Okay, all the variables you need to manage. Okay, so just go there and download it. Okay, and then let me know what uh, you think about it and if you use it or not. But to um, understand the plyometrics, um, understand the reactive strength. That's what uh, that what uh, we develop with plyometrics. We need to understand the stretch shortening cycle. Okay, so uh, very briefly, the stretch shortening cycle is um as three main phases the pre-activation phase um the stretching phase or eccentric and uh, um, a sub phase amortization or transition and the shortening phase or concentric so briefly speaking about that kumite okay the athlete is hopping okay um and he has um a flight phase where is or her feet are off, are off the, ground, the ground and when they are getting on the ground, approaching the ground, the, for example, the quads are going to, to suffer a pre-activation, okay, to, to prepare the ground, the contact of the feet with the ground and that's the pre-activation. There is a, something like... Um, an onset of a muscle contraction on the quads, for example, and, and their muscles, of course, but this is an example. Then when the, the, the foot or the feet um, make contact with the ground, on the ground, there is the stretching phase or eccentric. Uh, in other words, the quads are going to stretch more or less depending on the... Um, on the landing um, height um, and the jumping or the, the, the landing height and on the, the depending on the athlete strength and there is an activation of the quads and other muscles to um, resist to the, the speed the body brings um, from the, um, the falling, okay? Yes? I'm talking well, fine, yes, I, I think you understand. Then we have the amortization and the transition before, uh, between the, the eccentric and the concentric phase and what is the concentric or shortening phase. It's when the quads and other muscles will um, contract to make the displacement, the jump, the, the hand movement. And let's imagine this uh, example of Shuto where I make this fast move with Bompin, this one, Bompin. this is a stretch shortening cycle, where I make a counter movement, a very fast counter movement to, to produce more strength, power, speed in the defense itself, okay? This is a stretch shortening cycle in my upper limbs, okay? Um, in Kata, for example, uh, or even in Kumite, we can make the, the displacement for from a static position but with a slight counter movement the plyometrics the reactive strength is um when we have a counter movement before the main movement 
okay? To bring more elastic energy, to uh, be able to produce more power, okay? In the main phase, in the displacement, in the jump, in the punch. So we make this counter movement to go forward, okay? That counter movement can be very, very, very small, almost, um, almost, um, uh, how can I say? Almost, it isn't unpredictable, is um, unseen, okay? That's not the, the, the right word, but word, but you understand me. Um, that's that's why, for example, when we want to punch harder and we are not um, aware of tactical or strategical um, issues as the to not um, to not uh, oh my god, my brain is is stopping me from getting the words I want. Um, I don't want to huh, to make my opponent to perceive when I'm going to attack. I miss the word, so I go around. So you 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 understand? When I'm not aware of that things, I just will make this pam pam. Okay, this counter movement to produce more power is an intuit intuitive strategy that my neuromuscular system will use to produce more power. He knows that if I make this counter movement, the punch will be harder, okay? More powerful, more faster, more fast, okay? Faster, that's it, faster, okay? It will be faster, okay? You can say yes, but uh, it will be um, um, easier to defend because you are showing you are going to attack. That's true. I'm going to make the punch from a... a, a a longer distance from the opponent that's all true that's why we teach our students to punch from here directly okay but if we think about it when we make, make this movement it will produce more power okay so even in kumite if i want to 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 displace faster i'm hoping because that will allow a more effective stretch shortening cycle, a faster short stretch shortening cycle. When I make him pam pam pam, then I touch the ground and pam pam and go okay towards my opponent. That will allow me to produce more speed in the movement to get a longer distance um, faster. Okay, so that's the importance of the stretch shortening cycle. Okay, um, and then to finish this long class almost an hour i think sorry this just me trying to share the most uh, the more knowledge I, I i can okay um there's a difference between non-trained athletes and trained athletes i'm not talking about trained in karate i'm talking about trained in um, strength training with external loads, with more advanced methods as biometrics, all of that. Okay, so if I grab one of my athletes and want to um, take advantage of all um, of a well designed uh, um, training program for strength, speed, and power, my my um, my priority will not be the same as an athlete that already has one, two years of experience of training with external loads, okay? It's not the same. With an untrained athlete, I will put a higher percentage of maximal strength training without, the, um, the, without worrying about the speed of the movement, okay? Why? Because we need to get them... Um, in a foundational period, okay? Where we are going to prepare his body, his tendons or her tendons, her ligaments, her joints, her muscles, okay? For more intense stimuli that we will uh, get um, further uh, when she has more experience with external loads, okay? The, we are going to prevent that she gets injured okay injury prevent prevention this is 
another main reason why the percentage of maximal strength training, uh, the especially the hypertrophic method, but it can be um, also made with endurance strength. Okay, those methods that don't demand um, a very high level of uh, a very fast muscle contraction. Okay, injury prevention because these methods with a more controlled movement allows to um, develop the proper technique of the exercises. Okay, and we already we will will uh, we will already already have um, a benefit in the development of power of those unexperienced athletes in um, strength training because they will increase their, their muscle unit recruitment. This is a team for other class also. Um, and they, they will learn how to um, engage more muscle fibers in the movement, in the action, in the exercise. Okay, so they will develop power even if they don't um, worry about the speed movement, the movement speed, okay? This doesn't mean that they can't already include from the first day some ballistic training with just their body weight, for example, or some plyometrics when, we, when you design a well, um, a proper plyometric training, okay? Just go to the PDF on Telegram and just download it. It's everything there, okay? You can, but the main priority will be maximal strength, endurance strength, that's that thing, okay? Um, when we have an athlete with a year, a year or more of experience a, at the gym with external loads, these things change, okay? I'm going to put the maximal strength, for example, in a very low level of priority, I must include it at least once a week so they can keep their maximal strength. Okay, that is important because it will be it will help um, to move uh, easier from static positions. Uh, it will help their uh, endurance strength be because of um, of a, a, a thing called. Uh, efforts, uh, economics, economic, okay, uh, economy, I'm sorry, effort economy, um, and then um, it will help him, help them to keep um, fresher during a committee about or cut around, okay? Um, but the big priority will be rapid strength, explosive strength, ballistic training, plyometrics, um, traditional methods for, mu for muscle power, those will be the biggest priorities of their training programs for strength, okay? We invert things. So please don't take your inexperienced athlete to the gym and make him uh, do... Um, the hardest thing you get on the internet. Okay? Well, to end, to finish this class, let me say one thing. I don't want... No. My biggest mission is that karate coaches become autonom autonomous, okay? Independent on their work when they are preparing the physical training for their athletes. I don't want you to be just copycats that go to Sandra Sanchez videos, Agaev videos, Lefebvre videos, Ivan Oyal videos, and that just, just take those ideas, Quintero's videos, and just take those ideas of exercises and just put them uh, randomly on your athlete's um, training program without knowing when to use it, how to use it, uh, um, who should use it, um, when to use it, okay? I just, I already said that, but it's missing something. How, how when, uh, with who, okay, e and why, okay? Because you can see a given exercise of Sandra Sanchez, for example, that has many videos and many ideas you can take, 
uh, from his uh, training sessions, but they are adequate for her. They might not be the best exercise for your athletes because they have different characteristics, because they have different levels of preparation, because they have different levels of, of motivation, because they have different bodies, because they have just two hours to, to train uh, per day and the Sandra Sanchez dedicates eight hours a day training karate. So we must know the whys, the hows, the whens, the with whos of every training method. Okay? This is a true elite coach in karate for both competition or traditional karate okay um so my goal is to give you all the knowledge known by evidence by science okay so you can be autonomous and don't ju they just don't go um to an instagram account or a youtube channel and just take a random uh just take random ideas from someone you consider an authority because you don't know the basics the principles the foundations of each method so just keep learning and evolving uh and i promise you i will teach you literally everything science knows about train methodology and i will adapt everything to karate kumite kata kids flexibility strength everything okay so congratulations to get to this part that means you really want to dig deep into knowledge and not just be a lazy coach that uh, thinks it he knows everything and just want the a tip here, a tip there, okay? It's valid. I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying that's not the goal of my content, okay? So, best regards, cheers. Put your comments um, below. Just tell me what you think about the classes. Just propose me themes to develop because the um, week by week, okay, I don't really have um i won't grab a theme and we'll develop it always with a sequence that would we, we that would be a, a course okay an organized course that would be different but i just i would just grab each week a theme that i want to talk about that someone asked me about on instagram or telegram or or else and i just grab it and will give you everything science knows about that theme that's it Okay, that's my way of helping uh, karate's community all, all, all over the world. Please tell your Spanish friends, your Portuguese and Brazilian friends that this class is always also available in Spanish and Portuguese so we can get more people. One more time, I'm sorry for my English. I think, uh, I hope it's enough to understand all the content and I promise in the next three or four weeks it will be much better. Kisses and goodbye, my friends. Keep studying, keep training, keep evolving, and keep safe.